I'm Barani, your Pred, and we are Pred and Barani from the Pred and Barani show on YouTube. Doing Fallout 4 Diary, is what we want to call it, or something else? Yeah, mm, Diary is fine with me. Mm -hmm. Or Journal, or uh, quiz, Quizzery, or yeah, Jizz. Fallout 4 I, Jizz. Jizz. <laughs> jizz in your face. For Journal like and Quiz. Yeah, but I didn't prepare a quiz for this episode. Me, me neither, but... Be prepared. There might be some quizzing in the next episodes. Yeah, this is just like introduction. Exactly. We both prepared um, cuts made out of material from our first three hours in the game, roughly. Mm -hmm. And wanted to talk about our characters and background story of our characters and our um, our first impressions of the game overall. Yeah, and so on. And we prepared both a video, so I'm gonna start yours, and you are free to talk. And whenever yeah. I, you whenever can just I... leave it like that because I'm gonna start talking, and then um, okay, cool. Where, uh, yeah. So so leave it like that. You mean not not play? Not play. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. Say the word play, and I'll play. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So so uh, I, I prepared a backstory for my character because I, I thought it would be more fun to engage the game in a role playing style. Right, so mm -hmm. that I don't uh, choose stuff like I would, but as the character would. So Great. I was really bored today, so I came up with a backstory. So my uh, character's name is 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 uh, Alexander Kruszynski, right? <laughs> He's uh, the grandchild of uh, Polish immigrants, and um, those immigrants they were scientists, right? And they fled the Soviet Republic because they were threatened. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, right, because the military forced them to, you know, work, uh, make, like, weapons for them, like, research and, and weaponry, whatever. And so they fled and they came to the United States. But they couldn't work as researchers here anymore because um, people were thinking they were, like, Russian spies. So they wouldn't have any important work, right? So what basically happened is the grandfather, who was a, a uh, physics guy right mm -hmm. and um he worked as a mechanic and uh, his mother uh, his grandmother she worked uh, as an accountant in, in an insurance company mm -hmm. right so that's like the the backstory like where he came from why he has elaborate. like a polish name and um well basically he himself he's uh he's ex-military right <laughs> so he used to fight in in the war and um he was part of the engineer corps right so Mm -hmm. um, and basically he fought one, not really battle, it was more like a skirmish. So he was like an engineer uh, supporting like special forces in the field, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, maintenance, like the weapons, the armor, um, repairing, that kind of stuff, right? And then one night in Alaska when, when the Chinese attacked the United States, um, it's like 10 years before the start of the story, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, he got the, the 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 night camp got overrun by Chinese troops, right? And all his comrades, they got not comrades, but all his uh, his fighting buddies, they got killed in their sleep while Alexander was on guard duty. Oh wow! And um, he barely made it out alive, and he got into this brutal like close combat knife fight with this seventeen year old Chinese <laughs> child soldier, <laughs> and that's where he got the scars from in his okay. face. Right. Wow. Um, he was poor Alexander <laughs> Krasinski. Yeah, Alexander Krasinski. Yeah. So uh, that's where the scars are from. And um, since that incident, right, he left the military and he suffered from PTSD, right, the yeah, post-traumatic stress syndrome. Yeah. And um, he was sent to a military psychiatry, psychiatry right, near mm -hmm. Boston. And with the help of classical music and a new hobby... <laughs> Uh, which is carpentry, Alexander managed to recover and live in almost normal life. Wow. Yeah, but he was still different, right? He was still different. He was still not the same anymore. Yeah. So he lost most of, most of his empathy, mm -hmm. right? relying on the strict moral grounds that he was raised upon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that man. was like the only structure keeping him in the behavioral boundaries of the society. But oh. sometimes, you know, he goes violent. Like uh, sometimes uh, it gets triggered by music or visual imagery. He just starts to become like really violent. Oh, wow. Yeah. So and one more thing is, right, 
now we sh- we we have to ask ourselves why does he have a wife and stuff right mm-hmm. if he's so the wife he married like before right and that is like his uh, thing he doesn't really have any joy anymore in life and he doesn't really like any people and he doesn't have any feeling towards people but he has this this uh, strong feeling of loyalty and duty to the commitments mm-hmm. um he made before he Uh, suffered from PTSD. Probably the strong moral um, uh, values his um, his father gave him or his parents. Yeah, I guess. I guess. But th- about. that that doesn't really um, um, uh, it doesn't really. Well, how do you say that? You know, like in in the stuff that happens now, right? Uh-huh. He doesn't really care anymore. So it's I only see. stuff that happened before the PTSD. Okay, before shell shock. Yeah, so he doesn't really have any moral ground anymore. Poor guy. Yeah, poor guy. Uh, you definitely made me feel empathy for him, the guy who doesn't feel yeah. empathy. Yeah, me too, me too. And you made me understand him completely. Yeah, well, you will understand like his actions um, yeah. in the first uh, three game hours a little bit. I don't know how I could follow up on your on your character backstory at all. This is like <laughs> next level shit. It's like, you, it's like your own life and you... It, it, yeah, you seem to know him so well that it almost seems like you based it on something real. Well, yeah, maybe I did. Like deep down inside me, yeah. no empathy. Yeah. Well, whatever. You, you know how I came up with that. Uh, no. Basically, if you if you press play now, right, and go into the how I um, allocated the the stats mm-hmm. in the in the video. Should I press press play? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. Yeah, it's only the next in the next frame. It's like where I I put the points into the stats. So basically, I had I had a certain uh, certain character in mind. I wanted to play somebody who was good at crafting, mm-hmm. like weapons, armor, the and, engineering uh, background, and the father's um, <coughs> background. Yeah, the the, yeah. Me- the mechanic. Yeah, you can pause, right? Yeah, that's like really small. Let me make that. Okay. Bigger. Yeah. So. Um, Right, he was like part of of the military, right? So he has a very high perception, mm-hmm. and he doesn't get because he's not emotionally there anymore. He doesn't get distracted that easily, so that's why he has like a high perception. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> strength is at four, and that's because um, four is the perk level where you can do armor crafting. Uh huh. Right. Uh, endurance is because I mean he's military. He's a tough guy, right? So he has like a little more uh, resistance against damage and and stuff like that. Makes Charisma sense. is one because he's not charismatic at all. Yeah, he lost um, that probably. That kind of makes sense, right? Yeah. Because he's yeah, T- totally he doesn't give a shit. Intelligence is uh, five because I mean he's an engineer, so um, he does have a certain amount of practical <laughs> intelligence. <laughs> well, and you can of course craft guns at level five. Okay. Yeah, agility is um, a little bit for fighting. I don't know what what unlocks at 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 three. It was something okay. like faster reload. I don't know. Mm. And luck is just um, the rest of the points I, I had see. to allocate. Oh, so that's basically that's basically it. So if you press play now, I can. This is gonna go really quickly. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes, followed by flashes blinding. Yeah, so basically this is when the shit hits the fan, right? He was like passive aggressive towards his wife all day. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> so this is when shit hits the fan, so how you know, about he hears in the radio, shit, the bombs are coming and he gets this fit of I have PTSD. one question. One question. So wow. his his wife really decided to, to, to make a son with him, being in that state, in that mental state he is in. Yeah, well, I, 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 I think that's the, the one wife, weak point of your story. I think the, 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 the thing like with their relationship, right? Uh-huh. I mean, she is clinging on to the old Alexander. I see, and, and maybe, she, she, yeah. maybe he doesn't mm-hmm. even, he's not even as bad with her as he is with all the other people because you said he's so, he's so, so hardwired to, to, to be um, good to all the stuff that was before yeah. his PTSD. Yeah, and it's like trauma. one of the main like old school things is uh, when you marry, you know, you have to give your wife a a child, right? Yeah, oh, that on, makes on, sense. Yeah. yeah, and on her side, it was like maybe um, he will get his PTSD cured if if he you know 
yeah. and gets this loving child. Maybe we can fix him with the baby and our relationship. Yeah, that's what basically a lot of people do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going, uh, sorry for interrupting. No, it's okay. So, Keep the on. bombs are coming and he gets this PTSD fit, right? He doesn't care about anything anymore and he, he, he kind of runs, he, you know, he sees red. Mm -hmm. So what he does is he rushes out and he leaves his, he leaves his wife behind him. Oh, she wow. can't even follow up because he's just like running and running. Right? Yeah. And then uh, at some point, you know, he regains, like he's pushing the people aside. He wants to be first in the wall. So at some point he um, regains his uh, control and he, you know, the wife caught up. She's like a really fast runner. <laughs> <laughs> you notice. So yeah. the the bomb hits hit the the thing the ground and you know they go down in the elevator and everything is fine. Oh. And then they um, everything seems fine. Yeah, it seems fine. And then they get locked up in these chambers, mm -hmm. right? And they don't they they're just rushed in there. They don't really know what's going on, what's happening. Yeah. And Alexander, he kind of so he kind of feels relief now because he's like, okay, all my responsibility like for myself and you know all the it's like gone mm -hmm. so he kind of feels relieved so the next thing that happens is the the chamber like unfreezes right mm -hmm. um you probably remember this part and um <laughs> you see yeah. these two guys well you will see um this is the one yeah here. yeah they go and they go there and, and take the baby and this is really weird because one thing we don't know yet um, when she gets killed, <laughs> yeah, we don't really know. Maybe he feels relief now because now, oh, yeah, the burden of of that he like failed, maybe like he failed his wife. Yeah, he, yeah, you know that he can't, his 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 can't life. hurt her anymore. There aren't there anymore. So so we don't really know if he's relieved now or if he's actually mad because he couldn't. You know, keep up with the the responsibility yeah. to, to like protect his wife. I mean, he was uh, he was endangering her by being around her, probably. I yeah. would guess. Yes, definitely. Yeah. So, yeah. So the thing freezes again, and then um, he wakes up in the vault. He doesn't really know what's going on, and he searches the place. Right, he just uh, runs around, see if there's anybody alive. Yeah looks for weapons and, and stuff like that and um, he's like in, in total soldier survival mode now right yeah, he's like, trained to be good and he's this. just trained to uh, deal with these kind of situations yeah. I mean that's what a lot of P PTSD people do right they play <laughs> oh, games man, then video games <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I f uh, he failed at that game. He was never good at video games. Yeah. So he here is like his first combat action. You can see his aim is um, is pretty supreme for uh, like because he was a soldier and stuff. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. And the Almost. training kicks in. <clears throat> yeah, those bugs. You know what? What? Uh, what? Alexander really thought was weird. There were like posters with bugs on the wall, where it said like um, "kill these bugs." Oh yeah, yeah. It's really weird. So he finds this pit boy, and um, he puts it weird. on because he thinks it will come to use. And then he leaves the vault, right? Because mm -hmm. it's the only thing he can do. Yeah. What else is there what to else? Do? Yeah. And then because he's uh, he's uh, he's such a uh, crafty guy. Oh, look at that car. That's the car I had in Fallout too. Oh really? I really have to yeah. put that there because now I can see it in three D, and that's really awesome. Oh, that's so he, cool. he walks around the old place. He finds the robot that they had. In their in their house, and the robot tells them that everybody's dead, and it's it's been two hundred twenty years since all this stuff happens mm -hmm. happened, right? Yeah. And uh, he, he he doesn't care about the robot; he just sends them away. And he's like, "Okay, I have to craft myself a better weapon because I mean, he can craft weapons, right? He's yeah. he's an engineer, so that's what he does. He runs around the town and he scavenges all the stuff. He, of course, as an engineer, has computer skills hmm. and he finds this really interesting computer where there is somebody who's uh, dealing with drugs oh um in the town and he doesn't really know if this was afterwards where did he find the computer in in sanctuary yeah in sanctuary oh. and he actually finds this little hideout behind the house wow yeah where there are drugs and there's a safe but there are no bobby pins around there are nowhere no bobby pins 
You found two saves actually. Wow. And no bobby pins. Well, <laughs> being like he got he got kind of interested in drugs because suffering from PTSD, he's very um, susceptible to alcohol and drugs. Yeah, I think so, they will give him a little relief probably. Yeah, you have to see about that how he deals with uh, the mass of uh, alcohol and drugs. So basically now he almost loses his shit, right? He 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 has this this shop, this mechanics shop, which reminds him of his grandfather, and he's almost going like amok again. Mm -hmm. And he finds the stupid dog, which he leaves it behind because it sucks. And I don't know if you can hear the sound now, but um, there's classical music playing in the background from one of the radios in the shop. Oh, and that calms him down again. Oh, that calms him down. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. he learned that at the the psychiatrist. Uh, psych psychiatric institution, you know, yeah. he recovered because of classical music. So he sense. runs around there <laughs> and he looks uh, at, at and carpentry and uh, he picks up some tools because, you know, he likes to craft yeah. stuff. And uh, yeah, he leaves Wait. the dog behind because it's just annoying. And here's gunshots, right, in, in, the, in the town. Mm -hmm. And the raiders attacking this building. Oh fuck! Yeah, and he he quickly uh, disposes of the raiders, because I mean they're not just a threat to the people in the building. He doesn't care about the people in the building. They're uh, like a threat to him, right? So yeah, that's why he disposes of them. Yeah, yeah. He goes inside the building, and he finds this, um, these dumb people uh, that he doesn't <laughs> like, and. Um, he's actually Minuteman, and we can talk about that later because I looked up what a what a Minuteman is. He, he of course he, um, he he wants a reward for helping them. That's the first thing he asks for. He's like, give me <laughs> give me something. I saved your life. Yeah, give me drugs and, or money. Yeah, and then they drugs. give him this uh, this mission to help them. So they say there's a power armor on the roof. Um, you know, get in that power armor, take the minigun, and uh, kill all the raiders. Mm -hmm. You know, and because he. That's what he does, what he likes doing. He's like, okay, it sounds like fun. I'm going to go on the roof and do that. So that's what he does. Of course. Can he I... gets the minigun and um, he feels right at home and just slaughters people. Yeah. Sounds like Alexander Krushinsky. <laughs> it is Alexander Krushinsky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Um, basically, that's it. So he saves the guys and he asks... Well, the guy is like... Um, well, you're on our side now, right? And Alexander, mm -hmm. he responds, he's like, well, I I'm on my side, not on your side. <laughs> I, I'm my own side. <laughs> and then this this, this weird-ass uh, psychic lady, she starts talking about destiny and uh, that our child is still alive. Mm -hmm. And we should come back to Sanctuary and uh, build, like, and uh, help them build shit. But Alexander is not convinced, unless, of course, he can use them for his benefit. Mm -hmm. And that's where we stopped. Hmm. Playing. That's super interesting. Yeah. That's Alexander Krasinski. And Alexander Krasinski, I already, I already have <laughs> embraced, embraced him with my, with my heart, and I like him actually. Uh, yeah, I, he's like a, like a tragic. I feel sorry for him. Yeah, he's an, yeah. he's an anti-hero. Yeah, of course. Yeah, he is. He's like um, uh, 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 Tony Soprano a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're living in the. In the, in the age of anti-heroes, so he yeah. fits right in. Yeah, yeah. I, I really wonder, uh, I think it's kind of fun because um, now the character is just, um, you know, going its own path with, without me really um, <laughs> manipulating it. Huh? So basically the character is going to surprise me while playing. Wow. And I, think, I think that's pretty cool. Like, that's pretty cool. It's super cool, yeah. Method. I have to say... I don't have that elaborate backstory. Well, not I mean, as not still, as good as yours, definitely. Well, some backstories like develop over time, right? Definitely. And well, I went into the game not even knowing when it is on the timeline, not knowing yeah. what mm -hmm. will happen. I knew nothing about the game. I have played Fallout Three, and um, now we're in Meta Talk, by the way, of course, as you might have <laughs> noticed, dear viewer. And uh, played Fallout Three, and it's been how long? Six, seven, eight years. Yeah, I mm -hmm. don't remember like much. Six, seven years. Yeah. I watched you Fallout One Let's Play two years ago or longer, and I don't remember much. And I'm watching you Fallout Two Let's Play right now, but I'm not that far in, so I'm not uh, into the Fallout lore, um, <clears throat> and I'm not into the Fallout mechanics very much. And I, I'm just not a 
not an expert at all. I'm basically a noob. So this is how I went into the game. Uh, should I start my video and just talk about my character? And Yeah, of course. Yeah. And after we played both videos, we are going to be talking about, well, on a meta level again, uh, about our impressions and about what we liked and didn't like. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's start this thing up. Where's mine? I think it's this one. Yeah, she's called Berta. Oh. Huh. I hope it's not too loud or too quiet. So let's see how I how I made her. What I wanted to do was actually because I thought the setting right there would be inside a vault, and I <laughs> thought she would be like a person that has lived through that horrible war or at least has lived in the wasteland buried un under the under the ground and inside a vault you know yeah so i wanted to make a, a strong but also intelligent and charismatic woman that has seen a lot and lived through a lot and you you should be able to see that yeah, oh, well, you got it right. Yeah, that's uh, definitely what you see. So when I found out that it was actually f before the war, I was kind of surprised. So my video is going to be more of a, like, event after event. Um, I'm ta going to take you by the hand and show you what, what has happened. And um, this is... country has gone to heck in a handbasket. Oh, man. Oh, God. Oh, man. Yeah, this is my kind of <laughs> attempt at humor. I don't know if it's that good. But she's also a very sarcastic person. Because, you know, she has seen a lot. I don't know what in suburbia, but she did. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, the person that I wanted to play uh, and roleplay as was not at all versed in fighting. And I am not versed in this, uh, in this uh, skill system at all. So I thought, okay, charisma, intelligence, and agility are things that I need to be sneaky and um, charismatic and talk my, talk, my, uh, talk my way out of situations that are uncomfortable for me. And um, I think actually agility is very good for fighting, right? That's what I found out later. Yeah, it's very good for like sneak attacks and stuff, yeah. Also that, but it gives you a lot of... Um, action points and stuff like that oh, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. i didn't really know how to approach this at all so um and i'm going to actually change my 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 um my points later a little bit um, because you can do that before you leave the vault right oh yeah true yeah so but i started out with this with this kind of build and uh i don't give a shit if that's viable at all so i'm gonna play it and my name is gonna surprise you a lot berta as you know is my my first name but i thought about what is a good last name <laughs> and at first i wanted to i wanted to name her uh predopulus <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, Greek. typing in predopulus i got another idea <laughs> now if you if you have an inkling <laughs> 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 yeah, I really like that name, and it didn't didn't come to my mind before ever that you could make that out of your name. That's kind of funny, I think. Yeah, weather should hold up. So, she is kind of into kinky stuff, but sometimes it gets too much. Park with you, because I want to get pregnant again. I wonder how they had sex in the park. That's just crazy. Anyway, shit, it's the fan. We're going to the vault. As we saw in your video, and uh, okay. he's fine We're inside the vault. It's basically everything that we saw in your video, right? I could yeah. even I could even skip it because it's not really that interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't go into depth about all the uh, the stuff you can read there. And yeah, shit. exactly. So let's see. Yeah, they say the scientists tell her that this is some kind of decontamination pod. I think. Yeah, and then it's and then it's a cryogenic pod, which surprises everyone, but the vault tech employees. So let's see. Yeah, he got killed, and then she got out, and She's she runs around. The floor, yeah, <laughs> cleaning the floor. Exactly. Well, she is a good um, a good woman. 
what do you call that a good housewoman? That's what you call it in German, but I don't know. Why would Baltic do this? She's a good mother. She knows how to clean stuff. But with Cotsworth's help, uh, women are kind of um, kind of freed from that burden yeah. of yeah. sexist patriarchy Hello? in 2000, uh, 2017, right? Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. she looks for people and she only finds uh, uh, finds uh, dead people, long dead people. It seems like the first Stimpax. I really like like finding the first Stimpax. They looked so cool and I. I I kind of love the concept of the Stimpak, Stimpak and how it looks in the Fallout universe. So yeah. what, what mm -hmm. is in there? Can you like recognize what it is? What kind of weapon it is? Because it looks re really interesting, I think. Yeah, there is a, uh, there is a um, overseer um, like a log in one of the computers uh -huh. about it. Ah. Did you read it? Did no, you, apparently not. Was like, uh, I read a lot, but that not. I don't know if it was... Because he was afraid of mutiny, right, mm -hmm. um, by the security staff. But I don't really know if that was why he made he made uh, the scientists develop this weapon. Oh, so, because he was okay. afraid. He like at one point he was like, "Okay, I locked the door. Uh, I have somebody on watch. Nobody is going to come in here." And then he said, "I don't really I recall." But then he's like, "Oh, I hope the cryo later will be done soon." Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about Berta right now because... Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. No, no, you didn't interrupt at all. I asked you a question. Uh, uh, so I think she... she not, not a thing, but I know that she's really street smart. So she is able to pick locks, to uh, pick pockets, to sneak very well. And she's also very loving. As I said, she's a good mother. She's a good she's a good woman uh, to her husband. She was before he got killed. And uh, so she wants to avoid violence as much as possible. Of course, uh, so she's not really she's not really equipped to fight. But when she sees the safe with the master master lock, she says, "Okay, I need to come back to this and uh, pick this lock at some point when I got my my lock picks with me." So she has already like focused on this and. It's saved in her memory. Yes, definitely. So her first shooting wasn't that successful. But, yeah, but yeah. it was okay. It's not comparable to Alexander Krushinsky, of course. It was like a killing machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, but Berta oh, man, is, yeah. uh, is uh, not like ex-special uh, forces, right? So, I mean, no, not at all. So she finds this pit boy as uh, Alexander did. They sure do have a similar story, don't they? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wonder yeah. how that it's how like that parallel, comes. parallel universe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of really like a parallel parallel universe. And she thinks to herself, okay, let's uh, get this thing running. Looks like a neat computer. And uh, she's also very good in science and stuff and computers, of course. Did she have a job before? Um, she she was uh, at the university um, studying several uh, several things, computer science, for example, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. carpentry, and, <laughs> and and classical music, maybe. No, I don't know what she what she. <laughs> Dude, my phone is very loud. Uh, I don't know. I haven't thought about it, about it that much. I didn't have that much time, but I will. I will develop a very interesting character backstory. I hope <clears throat> over the course of the of the game. So she gets out of there as quickly as she can, as you can see, and then <laughs> rethinks her earlier statements. So, how could we maybe make this character so that it's not? completely lost when it comes to fighting was my was my thought still not knowing anything about the about the systems or what i would need to maybe uh, unlock a perk or anything yeah you know so yeah basically i took some points out of these three um stats and put some in perception because i thought it, it i thought it would be important i also read that perception is uh, needed to be able to pick pockets, so that's basically. Oh, really? I didn't. I didn't know that. Yeah, that's basically why I why I chose to put some points in perception. <clears throat> but agility should still be the highest highest value. I thought agility and charisma, because she she should be able to talk her way out of out of things and um, sneak her way into situations that otherwise violence would be needed. Yeah, I I I have. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, we can talk about that afterwards. Yeah, probably. So yeah. my thought was, um, 
whenever I can avoid violence, I, I will avoid violence with this character. Mm -hmm. And whenever I don't have the choice, well then, yeah, I don't have the choice, obviously. So outside, I, she, she ran around first because going back to Sanctuary seemed, seemed like a too hard thing to do for her. She would only think of her dead husband and stolen baby, so she ran around and she found a grave uh, without a name, which made her really sad, and she found a ranger's, uh, ranger's cabin with fucked up insects inside and also a beautiful um, green dress. Yeah, what I, f what I forgot about her, the most important thing, she's really into fashion. Oh. Yeah, she's really into fashion. Okay, so let's keep on going, because this is like her most important character trait. <laughs> yeah, so killing these insects took a, took a little because she's not that versed in handi handling a weapon. But um, she's very versed in looking good in uh, green dresses, so she put that on <laughs> immediately. Oh. And that insect made me cringe uh, really hard, so I had to show it. It's like the most ugly thing I ever saw in, ever in a video in game. In the blood sack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you do? I got, uh, it looks like, you know, actually, I need to talk about this. Uh, first, no, let's let's watch this first, because that's the, the vats kill cam, and it's just so buggy. Look at this. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it's just... Ter ter terrible. Now, the camera is buggy in many ways. We can talk about it later. Um, what did I want to say? Oh yeah, that that animal. Um, and I'm not joking here. In the Arctic underwater, there are animals that basically look like that. These are like underwater spiders, and they have uh, their legs are I think have uh, have like from one side to the other um, length of one and a half meters or something. Oh, what? Yes. One and a half meters? They live under the ice in the water and uh, on the poles. Or maybe oh, I, oh, I hope one. those calves never melt. Yeah, you'll never see them. <laughs> well, and if they melt, they, they're going to be dead. So Yeah, yeah. that's true. But it just reminded me of that. I saw it in a documentary. So fashion show number one. Holy shit. That's the sexiest cook I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. That's pretty good, right? Yeah, that's pretty sexy. Yeah, my girlfriend look said, well, face, man. She is, she's, she's like, determined to look good. Yeah. <laughs> I wish she, she was like an ex model. You know, yeah, maybe. Maybe that's part of the backstory I'm gonna develop. So, my girlfriend said she has the model figure. Um, I thought that, like, every kind of figure that you could choose is basically the model figure in this game. Even the fat ones look very extremely, yeah. sp uh, like, sportive and. Like made out of muscle more than fat, you know what I mean? Yeah. Anyways, so Codsworth, we're meeting him just as you did, finding out that we've been uh, 200 years, you know, <laughs> 200 years <laughs> frozen. <laughs> Fashion show number two. Very nice, right? And then uh, I, I'm, I had a level up and I thought, okay, where can I put my points? And I decided to go the Charisma route because that's the only one basically that doesn't have um, a combat perk in the first three levels. Mm. So this is about uh, buying and selling. But I don't really understand at all how that works. So maybe you can talk to oh, me about can, that you after. You can actually pick um, after the video. Any one, right? If as long as oh, you I have can. like. Well, if you have like Charisma ten, mm -hmm. you could uh, you could have uh, first picked the tenth perk. Oh wow! You okay. don't have to go up the tree. Hey boy. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I love that freeze frame. I just needed to get that in. So she, of course, starts a friendship with the dog, uh, and is not like um, Krushinsky, who basically hates the dog. Right now, I have my cat on my lap, by the way. She's kind of distracting, but who cares? And uh, the first thing I did in that little like um, shop building shop workshop as uh, i build a bed and went to sleep and that's my first day in the fallout universe as uh, berta predophile so did you take the dog with you uh, did she take the dog with her uh, to sleep you mean yeah for comfort 
Um, yes, I think. It's uh, it's waiting like, like next to the bed and then it's gonna come inside, yeah. Yeah, and awesome. Then. She sounds very interesting. She sounds like somebody who um, won't survive very long in the wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> well.